So this is an educational virtual reality experience created by our team at Envision. I'm using the Oculus Quest headset. It is a standalone VR headset that has the capability to track hands and even fingers. What we have here is a user interface that allows me to interact with the model of Earth. So I can do things like expand the size of what I'm looking at. We can look at general circulation of the planet. You can see how air makes its way from the polar regions down towards the equator at the lower levels before returning back to the poles at the upper levels. And within that broad hemispheric circulation, you can look at individual cells known as a Hadley cell, feral cell, and a polar cell. Um, each hemisphere has their own uh, similar cellular composition. And what you have is sinking air between the Farrell and Hadley cell. And that downward sinking air creates very dry conditions. And that's why we see the deserts along this similar latitude on the planet through the Sahara into the Middle East and then in the Southwest US. Um, the reason why the Southeast US is a, not a desert region is from the moisture impact and influence from the Gulf of uh, Mexico. So we can also look at air masses that typically exist on our planet. At the very top, you see continental Arctic. That's the coldest air of the planet, uh, where the polar vortex uh, likes to uh, live in the winter times, and then it relaxes in, in the summertime. Below that, you have continental polar air, and this is what we call stale air when there's a snowstorm around, not the true Arctic air like above it, uh, but enough cold to produce snow. And at the similar latitudes of the continental polar, you have maritime polar over the northern Pacific Ocean and the northern Atlantic Ocean. And, um, you know, this typically is slightly above freezing. So when you get that easterly onshore flow, it, it, it changes snow over to rain in the wintertime. Um, but it is co the cooler of the two masses in the uh, bigger oceans. Um, going south below the polar air masses, uh, you have continental tropical, and that's really the only continental tropical uh, climatology in the whole uh, continent of North America, in that, that southwest U.S. Uh, and northern western Mexico area. Um, and that's going to be some of your hottest and driest uh, air mass on, on our continent. Um, to the west and east, you have maritime tropical uh, air masses, and that's going to be your most humid and warm air mass where hurricanes typically like to develop in. So then we can move along and look at jet streams. So here you have your polar jet stream and your subtropical jet stream outlined in blue and red. And you have your polar region, temperate region, and tropical regions uh, split by those jet streams. And if we look at um, this view, you can see how the air masses are separated. Now, these, air, these jet streams like to move around. And when they dip, they form upper level lows and troughs and when they sort of peak they pull warm air above and generate an upper level high um, underneath called a ridge um, so you can see how this system can easily animate um, you know, instructional education not so much just in the world of meteorology but this could be anything biology physics chemistry you name it um, so taking another look at, at some features here, you have surface lows that travel along these jet streams. And when you have a surface low come in from two separate streams, they phase together. And that's what produces the big snowstorm for the northeast U.S., uh, typically between December and, and March. So moving beyond the educational animation experience, we can now view real model data. And this data is directly from the actual weather models. It's big cloud data that you have to translate into graphical representations. So what we're looking at right now is 500 millibar height levels. And where it's blue, greenish to blue, it, it represents lower um, geopotential heights. Where it's red, like right here, you're looking at higher geopotential heights. Um, and then what we can do is plot things like cyclonic vorticity. And, you know, since this is model data, we can, we can animate it. Um, 
So we can see the cyclonic vorticity pool up in an upper level low. I mean, I've never seen uh, anything like this uh, out there yet. So this is a, an amazing way to view upper level heights and, and the vorticity that goes along with it. You can also plot precipitation, surface temperatures, and uh, we can plot them all together. And what we can also do is lay it down, okay? And put the user interface off to the side here. So what I can do now is have control of this display. I can raise it. I can uh, let's see how high we can go, about that high. Uh, I can spin it so I'm kind of inside looking at the different layers of, of precipitation, geopotential heights, and vorticity. And again, 500 millibar heights, that's the height of the 500 millibar pressure level. So that varies. In warmer areas where the air is more expansive, um, it's red. It's a, it's a higher geopotential height. And in areas where it is lower, like right here, this is an upper level low. Um, so you can see the height contour difference. And, um, you know, again, I've never really... I've never really seen this type of, of visualization for geopotential heights uh, or vorticity. So, you know, whoops, we're, we're proud to bring this technology together. Um, big weather data and visualization technology into something that can be used as an educational tool. It could be used by news and media if you wanted to uh, put this on your digital stream production teams. Um, there's infinite uses for this, and again, not just in meteorology. It could be you know, any sort of, of science or really anything where you'd like to um, visually represent complex data. Now, we also develop augmented reality, and uh, augmented reality and virtual reality are part of the same family of extended reality. That's what we do at Envision. We develop extended reality solutions for training, simulation, and real-time maintenance. Um, so this is tabletop AR. Um, imagine receiving a push notification on your Apple or Android phone uh, saying a severe thunderstorm warning or uh, snow is on the way, and you can point your phone at any flat surface and generate beautiful weather visualization, whether it's models or present radar data. Um, so again, AR and VR can be used together. We can make collaborative experiences, uh, but this is a very unique way to, to visualize weather data from models or radar in 3D. And we get all of our data from WeatherBell Analytics. They have some of the best data on the planet. So we are working with them um, to produce this overall weather visualization solution.